So Schoology actually has a built-in portfolio functionality where students can take assignments and stuff from their courses and add it to a portfolio. I know um, what feels like 10,000 years ago when we had those 2021 graduation requirements and students would be building up a portfolio. Um, one of the reasons why DPS purchased Schoology was so that students could host a lot of their work into that portfolio for that specific purpose. I also know that the one the one place where it's a little bit challenging is if one of those pieces you want students to add to their portfolio is a Google Doc. Um, there's a little bit of finagling you'll need to do to make sure that that's in there, but students are able to kind of create their own portfolio from their Schoology profile where they can kind of save stuff up, um, which is, I think, pretty neat. Um, so you'll see, um, this is an example from my profile, but every student has this profile where they can do the portfolios. Um, and you'll see that students can add an assignment submission. And I'll note that that means like a traditional uploaded file assignment submission. I know a lot of teachers use Google Drive assignments and they think that's just like the only kind of assignment that there is. But um, back in the day, um, assignments were only something where students would upload some sort of file. So that's gonna be what that pulls. Students can upload a file. Um, so if you have students with things inside of their Google Drive, that would be something they could add to their portfolio. Or if they took a screenshot of their assessment and that's in their Google Drive, that would be another item you could add there. They can add a link or URL, or they can create a page. And for those of you who are newer to Schoology, um, pages are like the hidden treasure chest of Schoology in general. Um, I think a lot of teachers don't use them because most of their content is being presented by other means like videos or slides or other things. But there's a lot of editing features within pages um, for both the portfolio and for you know your course material that can be pretty handy. Um, so that's kind of a whole rabbit hole to go into there. So there's lots of options here. I know, again, um, some schools have gone into the practice for around student teacher conferences. They'll have all the kids in their advisement make a portfolio to show their parents and student-led conferences all the pieces of work that they're really proud of. So that's one feature that we've seen folks use. So if we take a look, um, your pro this is all going to be underneath your profile, so your students can just set that up under their profile. And then it's not info. Um, you can go down to portfolios here. And then from there, they can create portfolios and do all sorts of fun stuff. So you'll see I mostly just kind of have test portfolios for testing things out, right? Um, and so that's, that's nice because um, they can label them very clearly and there are different ways to export those if people want to export those to a zip file, if they want to share that with others. And I know this was some of the functionality we'd have for students kind of sharing that more broadly, especially as it relates to those 2021 graduation requirements. So. Um, a feature that I think has gotten a little forgotten, mostly because those graduation requirements have taken a little bit of a back burner right now and folks haven't been thinking about that, but that is a feature that we've seen um, intentionally selected and some folks are using it for a variety of different purposes. Yeah, I'm just noticing I went into a student view mode through the advisor dashboard and you can, one, if there's two tabs, you can look at their info and you can look at their portfolios if there's anything existing. So it sounds like other teachers from other classes are able to take a look at that too.